Hi guys, my name is Terrence, and today we're going to be talking about inheritance in Java. Now, inheritance is a very important part of object-oriented programming. It comes with these ideas of code reuse and polymorphism. Now, if you've been coding for any length of time, you know that one simple mistake in your code can cause lots of trouble down the line. With code reuse through inheritance, one class can utilize the methods and fields from a parent class. So a subclass can use the methods and fields from its parent. Now with polymorphism, this is when an instantiation of a class is also considered an instance of the classes that are further down the inheritance chain. And we're gonna see that in a couple of examples here in these code examples today. So as we can see here, we have this automobile object being instantiated in an object reference called car. And we're gonna system out print this car.fuel level field. And we're gonna use this car um, object references, my fuel level method. Now, when we look at this code, we say, hmm, in the automobile class, there's no field called fuel level. And also, there's no my fuel level method within the automobile class. But they are in the parent class. We have the fuel level field here that's going to grab. And we also have the my fuel level method that is grabbing from the parent vehicle because it's extending the vehicle class. So when we run this code, it's going to grab this, even though it's not specifically in the automobile class, and it's going to print that information from the parent. It's going to grab that and print that for us. So that we didn't have to retype any code. We didn't have to put this in the automobile, automobile class. We were just able to access that information for the sake of our program. So we can see the power of inheritance there. Now we're going to talk about single, multi-level, hierarchical, and multiple inheritance. Now single inheritance is just when one class inherits from another class. If this class, automobile, was being extended by vehicle, this is single inheritance. We have one class being inherited by another class, and just that's the end of it. Now with multi-level inheritance, this is just what it sounds like, a class inherited from a class which inherits from another class. And we can see that right here with multi-level inheritance with this electric vehicle, and it's extending the gas vehicle. But the gas vehicle extends vehicle. And yes, as long as those methods and fields are not private and they're public protected or default access, yes, this electric vehicle will have access to those methods and fields. <clears throat> Next, we're going to look at the hierarchical inheritance. Now, hierarchical inheritance deals with this idea that one class is being inherited by multiple classes, being extended by multiple classes. So we have this vehicle class here which is being extended by the automobile class and it's also being extended by the nuclear powered vehicle class. So you can see if you want to think of it that way there's a hierarchy there's one being extended by multiple classes. Now last we're going to look at multiple inheritance. Multiple inheritance is not possible with Java. right? Some other programming languages support that but Java does not support where you can um, extend multiple classes. You can only extend one class at a time. Now with interfaces, you can implement multiple interfaces, but you can only extend one class. So we're going to see that here throughout our code example here. The next thing we're going to look at here is the super keyword. Now when we're talking about the super keyword, we're talking about a way to access the parents' fields and methods once again. And we can see this in a different way by using the same object reference of car and we're going to call the check method in the current fuel level method. Now when we look at the check method within the automobile type, we can see that hmm, it's doing something interesting here. We have system.outprint my current fuel level is super.fuel level. So when we use this super keyword in purple, it's saying, hey, grab this field from the parent. And we're concatenating with, with the string here. The next thing we're going to look at is the current fuel level method. Now with this method here, we can see within the automobile class that it's saying, hey, you know, look at this interesting thing that's happening here. Super dot my fuel level in a method here. So it's saying, hey, grab this method from my parent and utilize it in within my method. And once again, code reuse. We could have retyped this all over again and risked making tons of mistakes because nobody's perfect. By doing this, we know the expectation of the code and you can utilize this in whatever way you need to fulfill the needs of your program. So when we run this code, we can see that it grabs that information from the parent and utilizes it within our methods. The next thing we're going to look at is the instance of keyword. Now the instance of keyword does 
exactly what it sounds like. It checks to make sure an object reference that's been instantiated is in fact an instance of a particular class. So when we run this code here, and when we show this, um, this if statement that we're going to look at, you can see that, yes, um, just like we spoke of before with polymorphism, because car is an automobile, which extends from vehicle, it also is a vehicle. So this is in fact an instance of, this object reference of car is an instance of the vehicle class. So when we run this code, it's going to print true. So when we run this here, you can see that it's going to be true because yes, the car object reference is a vehicle. It is a automobile, but it is a vehicle also because it's down the inheritance chain. Now this is what we, what we mean by an is a relationship. This object reference is a vehicle. Yes, it's an automobile, but it is a vehicle. Secondly, this is as opposed to a has a relationship. Now, when we talk about a has a relationship, what this means as, ex as ex exemplified in this example here that we're gonna look at, uh, we can see we have the class engine. Now, we, can, we instantiated the engine class within the gas vehicle class. So we have an instantiation stored in the object reference of gas with the constructor here for engine. Now, look at this. The gas vehicle is not an engine, and the engine is not a, a gas vehicle, but the gas vehicle has an engine, meaning that it has an instantiation of the engine class. So because of that, we can use this object reference in a way that in any way that we need see as seen fit for our code. So we can utilize it because there's a has a relationship. This gas vehicle has an engine, just like a real world car would have an engine. Now what we're going to look at is a superclass constructor. Now this is a very great way to be able to utilize the parent's constructor to fulfill the needs of our code by using its constructor. So when our object is constructed, we can utilize it for whatever needs we, we have for our, our program. So when we take a look at this, I'm going to borrow this code here. And what we're going to do is make sure that the super constructor is actually the first line within the child classes constructor. And when we take a look at this here, we can see that we have our nuclear powered vehicle class. It's of type vehicle, right? And we have our nuclear powered vehicle constructor back here. And like I said, we have to make sure this is a constructor, right? Because there's no return type. It's a, you know, this is how I always remembered is that a constructor looks like a method, but it doesn't have a return type. And it's the same name as the class. So if you want to remember that like that. So within this constructor, we have to make sure the super keyword is actually the very first line in its own constructor. And what this is saying is, hey, when you construct me, construct this parent and run this code up here also. And we can make this do whatever we would like it to do. So now we're going to go to the parent classes constructor. And you know what? We're just going to say, hey, uh -uh, you know, print out. Uh, we can say print. We can make this do whatever we would need. You know, it all depends with what you want to do with your program. But we're going to say this is a vehicle and a nuclear powered vehicle, right? Because there's a is a relationship, right? Because we're instantiating it, and this object reference would be considered both of these. So when we run this code, we can see that it's going to print this um, statement, and it's also going to print the statements from the the child classes constructor, child or subclasses constructor. So we run this code, you can see that here. Well, I hope that was helpful. helpful. Um, I hope that you enjoyed our time here today. If you like this content, please smush that like button and subscribe. We have more great stuff coming soon. Have a great day.